Hey everybody and welcome to another uh, getting to know the controller <laughs> guide for Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I'm Brian Monford. Uh, you know me from Aetherite Radio uh, as well as several other Final Fantasy related projects. Um, I just wanted to say hi and thanks for encouraging me to continue to make these uh, type of guides. Um, personally, I really enjoy playing with the controller Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, it's by far one of the best MMOs to have both that keyboard and mouse and controller support. So, uh, you know, I guess the first thing about this guide is uh, this is kind of a beginning introduction to using the controller in the world of Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, this is not going to be an end game uh, guide to configuring that. Um, I would encourage uh, you to check out my other videos and I'll try to keep making more uh, controller guides that would be tiered and geared uh, for end game uh, and job specific uh, setups. Now, uh, that being said, um, I personally uh, enjoy playing with the controller, and based off of uh, you know, some of the uh, comments that I've received on Twitter and on YouTube, uh, asking kind of for an introduction to the controller, there's a lot of settings uh, that uh, Square Enix introduced when the game first launched back in 2.0 and now they've introduced a lot more settings so I'm going to go through uh, just some general uh, tips and tricks to help you get comfortable with the controller uh, as well as show off several of the settings kind of talk about those and hopefully uh, encourage you to check it out. Uh, the reason why I play with the controller is I find it way more relaxing uh, to kind of lean back in my chair or play on the couch on the PS4. Uh, this guide is uh, useful for both. So uh, I will be making annotations to various sections uh, at the beginning of this video so you should be seeing those on the screen right about now but uh, I don't want to waste any of your time. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and talk about how we use the controller. And that was a perfect time for that wood whaler to go murder that squirrel. So step one, how do you switch to controller mode? If you've been using a keyboard and mouse or for some reason you're in the keyboard and mouse setting, nothing wrong with it. But if you want to check out uh, how to set up the controller, uh, you can do so via the system menu down here, uh, character configuration or the K on your keyboard. And switching to the controller mode is a simple as clicking this little toggle switch. So as you play, you can kind of get used to what it makes the most sense. In fact, you can even use the controller in keyboard and mouse mode to move around. Uh, so that works out real well. And just using a controller right here right now, I'm gonna pull up character config and I'm gonna switch into camera mode. Now, uh, just to start, we'll start with some basic uh, tips. Obviously you can uh, play with uh, how you want your X and Y axis to work. Uh, to do that, like in controller mode, by default, you'll get this type of menu. So if you're on the PS4, it should be fairly simple and this should be the default, but uh, going uh, over to system and then to character configuration, uh, and under general, if you scroll down a bit, you uh, have a lot of control over uh, uh, what your uh, uh, sticks do. So if you, like me, like to play uh, kind of invert, uh, inverted, you can set that. Uh, value and you have the options between third person and first person uh, as well and we're going to jump back here to the rest of these settings uh, here in a little bit so uh, that just allows you to uh, using the right stick you can navigate and move around looking up and down you can also uh, press down on the right stick to go into first person uh, view mode if you prefer that uh, as well and then pressing down on the right stick again will bring you out of that. Now, one of the things and the very <laughs> that's often used is uh, the left bumper. So by moving, pressing left bumper, you'll auto run, which is very comfortable, but be careful sometimes. Uh, if you don't pull yourself out of it, your character might continue to run and into a dangerous situation. So uh, just like anything, just use auto run um, and make sure that you don't put yourself into a dangerous situation. So auto run's very handy, especially if you need to travel somewhere and then you always don't have to be moving um, the stick. So that is the left bumper uh, or L1 uh, on the PlayStation 4 controller. Now by default, the default mode is in what we call hold and I'll show you how to toggle that here in the settings uh, section at the end of this video. But holding down the right trigger will turn, uh, will activate the right cross hotbar. I mean, sorry, the left cross hotbar. Holding on the right trigger will activate the right cross hotbar. So uh, forgive me on that one, that's left for the left cross and right for the right cross. Now, what this does and what this enables the system to do is that that basically turns these eight buttons when I'm holding down the right into my up, down, left, and right 
uh, buttons. And then uh, for the uh, the four on the right, that would be kind of Y, B, A, and X. Um, or if, you know, like square, circle, triangle, and the X button on the PlayStation 4 controller. So when held, the D-pad and your buttons become, you know, uh, skill positions. When released, they become like targeting uh, buttons. So like pressing A will default to the first target. Pressing right and left on the D-pad will go through the filters. Now, I'll talk to you guys here about filtering in a little bit and how you can get it to do what you want it to do really quickly. Um, but it, uh, we'll cover that here in just a little bit. So uh, those buttons all have other functions. So like uh, for me, I have it actually uh, the, the system configured so that X is my jump button and Y is my menu button. But you can configure that uh, under your system configuration gamepad settings. And then you can do your button configuration under this option right here on the screen which will allow you to set what you want. Now, so um, my preference was always to jump uh, with the X button or the square button uh, and, with, and the map with the, and, and sub uh, menus with the Y. That's just from coming from a classic Final Fantasy setting where triangle was always my menu uh, option. But uh, just so that people don't get confused, that is not the default. The default that X would be your um, map and sub commands menu and Y is your jump button uh, if you do not uh, change it from the defaults. But you guys can go into uh, calibration and uh, button configuration here. And this is where you also be able to uh, enable vibration, uh, keep the gamepad active if your client is not the active window. That's a preference on PC uh, and go from there. So anyway, I'd encourage you guys to take a look at that. This is under system configuration where you'll have access to the controller calibration and button configuration settings. All right, those the reason those are there, those are actually kind of global as opposed to by character. So just uh, just be aware of that. Now, um, since buttons have the ability, since you have the ability to get around and use buttons when you're not holding a trigger button down, um, that's really important uh, to use. Now, we talked about the menu, but if you have something targeted, pressing uh, the subcommands menu, uh, either the square or the triangle base of your configuration will bring up your sub menu and you'll use that a lot. Now, uh, before we actually go attack any squirrels, uh, I wanted to highlight a few other things. So let's say uh, as you're leveling, when you're starting out playing uh, any, any job or class, we'll go ahead and kill this guy, um, you'll learn skills as you get experience. And those skills will automatically get added to your cross hotbar. Uh, it's very nice, but let's say, you know, over time you start to get a feel and you want to move things around. Well, um, what's important about that is that it, when you hold down any of the triggers, you can press the basically either what's called the select, the share, the or the, I'm sorry, the options button, the big uh, pad uh, on the PS4 that you can actually click. And by doing so, you'll go into edit uh, your cross hop bar mode using the controller. From here, you can press one button and then you can press another button and you can move those abilities around as you see fit. So it's real easy to rearrange uh, your uh, your actions just using a controller. You don't need to use a mouse and keyboard. So again, uh, holding down any of the buttons, pressing what would be considered uh, old school select will bring up the, uh, the editing tool and you can move things around that way to whatever makes the most sense for you. Uh, pressing, let's see here, it twice will prompt you if you want to delete that off your your uh, your hotbar. So I'm going to say no in this case, but it's really handy uh, to use. And then pressing just the select button will remove that from the uh, from the menu. Of, you know, take you out of the editing mode. Now, another important tip is we talked about left bumper. Uh, if you actually hold down left bumper and press up and down on the right stick. It will allow you to zoom in and out, which is really nice. So depending on your preference, you can kind of have a zoomed in view, a zoomed out, and you can change it any time. It's actually real comfortable to use. I'm gonna go see if I can't, let me go find, okay. So I've got an enemy here, let me attack this guy. And you'll notice my enemy list over here on the left-hand side. Something uh, that the left bumper also does, if I hold it and press up on the D-pad, I will cycle through the engaged targets just using my controller. So this is really handy uh, if you're tanking or if you really just want to focus in on 
who you've got aggro on, etc. So I can kind of attack this guy, and I can switch to him as a target there. Um, this is a, a real, that's a real kind of helpful little piece, but just make sure that you have your engaged enemies target list uh, there. Now, uh, adding uh, actions to your cross hotbar is as simple as going into the action. You can say your, uh, uh, use your sub command menu, which would be square or X, but if you're like me, it's Y or triangle, and you can select that, and then you can set the ability to your cross hotbar from your actions and traits. So uh, if you press A, you're going to act and try to use it from your menu. But if you look at the window here, it'll tell you what button you actually need to press to set it to your hotbar. So just I would encourage you to you know make sure you check a look at that out. So uh, the nice thing is, is if you're also using a keyboard and mouse, you still can drag and drop uh, actions on to your cross hotbar as well. So that hopefully will help... Uh, get you familiar with adding in actions to your cross hop bar, moving those around, and then um, navigating the controller using some of the, the, the combination buttons. Um, a more advanced technique, if you have a ground targeting ability, you can actually hold the right bumper and you can uh, use the left stick to kind of place it. But I would encourage you just using ground target abilities with macros, uh, just because it's going to be a lot easier with uh, for you in that regard. So um, let's see here. The reviewing kind of my notes, and it appears that I've covered everything there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it and scroll down. <laughs> my notes tool isn't scrolling. So, okay, well, I'll see if I can't fix that in post. But, okay, we covered zooming in, zooming out. Uh, managing your cross hotbar and some a couple of settings, but really what is going to be the meat uh, and potatoes of your controller experiences is how you configure it for yourself to find the most comfortable way. And so we talked about wanting to, uh, to cover settings here, and that's what we're going to do right now. Now there's a lot of settings that <laughs> they can have all kinds of impact on. Uh, your experience so but the default control mode is legacy type the movement is camera based so you can see here that I can move and the camera is going and I can face the camera and I'm just using the left stick to move if I want to change that if I want to go to standard type where it's character based when I'm moving I'm always the always gonna be following the camera if I'm backing up instead of turning to face the camera my character is gonna back up so it's really going to be a preference uh, on how you want this to to work for you. Um, you know, obviously you back up a little bit slower. So just wanted to point that out for you for that setting. I prefer legacy type as my preferred movement type. Okay, some of this stuff applies to just more things than uh, uh, outside of that. We talked about the inverting of your axes. Uh, you can always um, have a couple of things like you can enable your y-axis to auto adjust when moving. Uh, you have a couple settings that what that means is that uh, as you move, the camera will self-center the y-axis uh, when in first person. Um, you can enable that auto adjustment. And so for people who uh, tend to sometimes walk and talk at the sky, like if you're like, oh, I'm looking at this, and uh, you, the system will self-center that. So if you're in first person mode, it's going to see it snaps me right back. All right. I don't like that. <laughs> but uh, I know for some, some people that they find that very helpful. Okay. So let's talk about targeting. So under the target settings, uh, you can automatically lock on targets when initiating auto attack. So I'll show you guys what that looks like right here. So auto attack. Now all I'm doing is auto attacking. So when I run, it's going to lock me on to that target. And so I can kind of run around in the circle. This isn't uh, going to help you dodge anything. So I, I've run into a couple players who are like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to keep circling them. And especially when they're tanking, it becomes rather difficult. But the reality is, is that if this helps kind of keep you focused and on target to where you need to be, it might be a good setting to, to, to check out until you're more comfortable with the overall uh, system at hand. Um, 
for me, I found that later on as I got more proficient, um, I, I turned that off because sometimes you just want to run away. If you're locked on target, uh, sometimes it can be difficult to disengage, especially if you need to dodge a particular move with some of the, the higher end bosses. So I'm going to leave that up to you for your comfort level. Um, it might be on by default. Uh, I would recommend going and checking that out. The other two you'll see enable auto target when tar no target specified and automatic face target. I recommend keeping those on. Um, they're quite nice and you can see your ground targeting uh, options here. All right, so the big thing um, is filtering. Um, I would recommend making sure enable target cycling is turned on. What this means and what this really does for you is that when your weapon is sheathed, like it is now, uh, it gives you that ability to, this is what you're going to target. And what that means is that when I press left and right on the D-pad, that's uh, using uh, that targeting filter right there. So if there was like an NPC, if there was a sign, if there was a minion, if there's another uh, character out there, uh, you, you will target them by using left and right. Up and down will target anybody who's in your party list. So if I had other people in my party right now, up and down would cycle through them if they were within range. So as a healer or as anybody who needs to uh, frequently target uh, any of your party members, up and down is great for that. Even, even, in a, uh, even if you're not a healer, I like to put party members on the up and down uh, uh, filter just so you don't end up targeting them when you're trying to target somebody else. So you'll see here under my weapon is sheathed, I can target non-party player characters, uh, alliance members, uh, all enemies, aggroing enemies, duty specific enemies, NPC and objects. I turn off minions and, and signs because I just don't need to target them. Uh, and I turn off uh, pets and minions and party members specifically. So uh, pressing left and right will never target uh, me or anybody in my party. Now when my weapon is drawn, I filter that down substantially to only enemies that I would uh, that I would target. So all enemies, aggroing enemies, and duty specific enemies. So all enemies means any enemy whether you've got hate on them or not. So uh, I can target this fungar and that lady and if we're uh, that ladybug. If we're fighting him and they're not linked, uh, I can still press left and see other uh, enemies. And this is going to be more of a personal preference for you on the target filtering. Uh, duty specific enemies is important, especially if you're in a particular mission. You want to make sure that you can target those as well. I turn off everything else. So I'm, if I'm engaged, if my weapon is drawn, I'm not going to target party members, alliance members, pets, minions, any other player characters or anything like that. So, um, and that's called just the enemies. You'll see these kind of pre-built options right here that will allow you to kind of uh, play around with these and then you can custom tailor it to your liking there. Now, uh, the system also gives you wonderful uh, other <laughs> target filters. Now, uh, you can see I've got all enemies, party members, friends, and you can build out these uh, filters as you like, and you can turn them on individually. So if you don't want um, uh, <laughs> any of these other options, you can turn those off. But I like having them all on, and you can see that they're enabled, once again, using kind of our all-purpose button, the left bumper or L1, uh, to engage. So I'll show you guys what this means. So you'll see I just got four filters. I'm not going to go through them. I'll let you guys play with those. But with that, I can hold down left bumper and press A. And you can see right here that I'm now in party mode. I can press L bumper and press B and now I'm in enemies only. I can press Y for all or I can press X for friends. And then I can always draw my weapon and sheath it. And then you can see here it's going to tell you what your filter is and how you've defined it. Uh, there in your uh, with all your HP and everything like that. So uh, filters is really important um, because especially one of the things I often hear about when players are uh, learning the controller is that they can't target what they want uh, and they can get easily frustrated with it and feel like they're not able to do what they need to do. And to that, I would just recommend and, and just advise you guys to come check out the filters section. So anyway, um, nothing really under character or mouse uh, under the general uh, controller settings uh, uh, tab. So the, those are the good ones to point out there. The other one, section I want to point out is your hotbar settings and kind of talk about this uh, to wrap up the video. So uh, display recast timers, blah, 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 blah. That's all just uh, well and good. 
uh, you can see here, uh, you can also display, and this is also for PS4, various uh, regular hot bars as well as vertical hot bars as well. And that's, you kind of see that on my screen. I'm going to move this and I can actually close it. But you can see that on my screen, I'm displaying a hot bar here. And then I'm displaying this one right here as well, which is really nice to do. And then you have some pet hot bar display settings, and that really applies there. So you can see uh, when the pet hot bar is visible, you, here's your option to display both pet hot bar and cross hot bar. Display only the cross hot bar, uh, pet hot bar version. <laughs> There's a lot of bars and hots and, and pets and things like that in that sentence that I just said. So sorry about that. Um, the real, uh, I guess, key uh, strength here is going to be under sharing and under cross. Um, I want to talk about what sharing is and what it isn't. Uh, you can see here that I am currently sharing hot bars 4 through 10 and cross hot bars 3 through 8. And so uh, anything that's not checked means that it's going to be custom for the, uh, for the class and the job that you're on. So if you've got a Lancer build like I have right now on the screen, this is it's going to be custom for that. If I get Dragoon and I switch to them, it's good. Uh, that's that shared uh, bar is not going to cross. So uh, Dragoon and Lancer, even though they're kind of they stem from the same area, uh, it's not going to be shared. One, two, and three in this case, as well as one and two on my cross, are always going to be unique for the class. Everything that's checked is shared. So this is it gives you a lot of. If you don't, if you have various things that you always like to have access to, uh, and not to show that off. Uh, one of the things I should probably shouldn't have pointed out earlier, we talked about the magical left bumper. The magical right bumper is you can hold it and you can easily switch to each uh, uh, cross hop bar you have and you have eight of them. You can just press it one at a time and it's going to cycle through your cross uh, hop bars and you can actually specify what hop bars you can, you'll cycle through. So it's different for uh, when your weapon is drawn. You can see I can keep pressing it and it's not moving. I can manually hold it and, and navigate which is helpful, but if my weapon's out, I can cycle through all. So you can see I can kind of have a bunch of items uh, listed here. What's, a, what's really great about that is that, let's say if you, I look at three, and here's uh, various jobs and classes that I've, I've set up, as well as a couple of macros that I have across everybody. I don't have to sit here and configure eight hot bars each and every time I uh, want to check out a new class or job. Um, and so you have full control over what is shared and what isn't. So as you get abilities and skills, uh, you'll find ways uh, that kind of make sense for you there. Now, the cross hop bar section is really what drives, obviously, the, the controller and the setup. So you can say, obviously, you enable the, the cross hop bar, always display it. So if you want to uh, hide it when you're not uh, in need of it, you can do that and it's going to hide it as well. Uh, you can display cross bar help, the pet hop bar, using the mount hop bar which would be for their skills and abilities uh, and then display the controller guide um, but one of the things i alluded to at the very beginning of this uh, video here is that there are three actual types uh, of ways you can use a cross hop bar there's hold toggle and mixed and um, this was uh, i actually tried uh, all of them and I, uh, all of them for a while but I, I ended up going back to hold just because i liked it the most so hold means you hold it down you release it it's off Toggle, let me go ahead and make that applied. Uh, it means that when you press it, it stays on until I press it again. So if I hold it, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to act as just a, as a button. So I hold it, and then when I release it, 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 it triggers. So that's what toggle is. And so like if, uh, if I press the left trigger, it's on. I press the right trigger, it's on. I don't have to hold down the buttons anymore. Uh, if I, and then I have to press it again uh, to, to toggle it off. So if I was trying to jump... And it's on now I'm going to try to use this ability until I press the button again and turn it off okay so I'm not a big fan of toggle but what's mixed so mixed is a is a combination between hold and toggle so what that does is I can hold it and I can release it just like I would in regular hold mode um, but what I can do is I can double tap or actually excuse me I can just press it really quick instead of like holding it and it becomes a toggle so if you like uh, kind of the best of both worlds you can hold it and release it, but if you just press like a button, it's going to act like a button and be in toggle mode for you there. And I used that one quite a bit, but I ended up going back to hold just because sometimes in some uh, intense fights, uh, it, it is accident prone where you might 
want to, to toggle it or you might just want to hold it and you end up toggling and then you're trying to do something else and you fire off a different ability. Um, I would encourage you to check out all three, see what feels the most comfortable for you because um, uh, that is uh, what makes the most sense. And then lastly, as you have your custom tab under the, uh, under the cross hotbar settings, and this is uh, the enable expanded controls with a simultaneous L trigger and R trigger is very important. You can see that I've got the first one uh, is cross hop bar two left and the, the second one is cross hop bar seven right. Cross hop bar two is like if you remember from the sharing section is unique to this class and job. Cross hop bar seven is a shared so it's going to be the same way across the board. So what does this actually look like when we have it in play? And what it looks like is, is that if I hold L trigger and then I hold R trigger it's going to take me to this. And so this would be something uh, specific, some uh, ability specific for this class or job. If I hold right trigger and then I hold left trigger, now we're in my shared section. So if I want to summon a minion, if I want to uh, mount up, uh, I can do so easily from here. So there's some really great music for you. That's an awesome roulette on your mount. <laughs> All right, so the reason that's important is I don't like having uh, to, to manage that or have to, I, I never really liked uh, toggling uh, to find my mounts. Uh, it's, it's really up to your preference. So I put my limit break here. I put a couple of target macros. You really have a lot of flexibility in what that you want to do with uh, that. So I would recommend turning that on. It's not on by default from last I remember unless they changed it but that's going to be under custom and enable expanded controls and then you can set what hot bars you want it to work with so i'd recommend checking that out obviously building out those hot bars so that you have those actions available and then you got a couple things so you can say enable auto hot bar switching when uh, when drawing a sheathing weapon um i don't like this but it's up to you so what this means is that when it's enabled if you're on uh let's see here if you're on let's see here let me switch to seven and then you draw your weapon, it's going to automatically set you to your attack uh, hotbar. And this was kind of uh, a little bit uh, frustrating for me uh, back, especially when I was trying to like have specific hotbars for PvE and PvP before they built it in the game. So maybe it makes more sense now and I, and I need to review it. Um, you can also enable uh, customization for when your weapon is sheathed. And what that means, uh, and the same thing as for weapon is drawn, is that uh, just like you can see, like I only want when my weapon's drawn the, these two hot bars to be accessible by pressing uh, the right uh, right bumper or L uh, R1. Um, but if you want them all accessible, you can just you can turn that off. What this does is that if you've got you know uh, you know skills and things like that, like um, um, emotes that you're not necessarily wanting to do, it prevents you from pressing right bumper and getting into an area that you don't have skills for the situation you're in. Uh, this is completely a user preference, so I'd recommend checking it out and see what works for you. Um, now, you see here, uh, and we're not going to dive into it because this is more, again, a beginner and we're already <laughs> running long, longer than I expected. This is for PvE, and then what you can do is you can have uh, PvP base settings that when you're in a PvP content later on. Uh, that you can kind of enable and set what makes the most sense. So if you had particular sets of setups for PvP as opposed to PvE, you can configure that here, which is really nice. So uh, if you don't want to toggle, uh, if, if you want to have a completely different layout, you can set that. And so when you're in Pv, uh, PvP, you, th this will manage itself. Um, I haven't played around much with that because I still li I like my settings and I like how I've done it. And maybe I'll make a, a video later talking about uh, PvP skills uh, intermingling with uh, just regular uh, natural skills, but um, that's all. <laughs> all said and done, we've covered a lot of skills. Uh, the best thing to do is just kind of go check it out and play with it. Um, play with the button configuration um, under system configuration, uh, and, and figure out what you like and what makes the most sense. Uh, and then check out those settings. The the big ones again being the the uh, filter settings to help uh, kind of manage your targeting as well as your cross hotbar settings uh, and how that actually works. And I still am in mixed. I don't like that. That would have messed me up later. Um, but guys, I just really appreciate you uh, taking the time 
uh, to watch this video. Uh, if you don't, if you have any ideas for future videos, please uh, let me know in the comments below. Like, favorite, share, all that social media. I guess end of the video trailer junk or whatever. Uh, let me know if there's any specific uh, job or class videos you'd like to see. Uh, if someone asks for Dragoon, I'm going to have to be busy leveling it uh, as he's one of the jobs that I have not focused on. But anyway, I just wish you guys all the best. Thank you for watching. Take care.